everyone. Welcome to this month's Kidneys in the Kitchen. I'm Megan Craig, Director of Programs for the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois. I am joined, once again, by a lovely dietitian who's going to talk with you um, about um, the basic kidney diet in stages four and five. So Melanie, go ahead and introduce yes. yourself. Thanks, Megan. Yes, my name is Melanie Betts and I am a renal dietitian at the University of Chicago. Wonderful. Yes. Um, so today we're talking about kidney diet stages four and five, but not on dialysis. Correct. So there's a distinction to be yes, made there. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. There's actually sort of three big distinctions um, in terms of what you should be eating along sort of the process of kidney disease. Okay. Um, so stages one and two and three and a half, three A, we, we like to say, um, that is very, very different than what we're going to be talking about today, which is also different than what happens with dialysis. So okay. everything we're talking about today is really for patients with a GFR of less than around 45 or chronic kidney disease stage 3B, 4, or 5. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So there's sort of three big topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, sodium, phosphorus, and potassium. I feel like those are always the big three in the kidney diet. Right. Okay. <laughs> you hear those words a lot. Yes. Yeah. Sodium in particular. Um, because everyone with kidney disease, no matter what stage, um, or really people even without kidney disease, should be watching how much sodium we eat. Yeah. We know that high blood pressure is a precursor. We know that yes. a lot of people have high blood pressure. Yes. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think it's interesting that the average American, the average intake of sodium in this country is somewhere around 6,000 milligrams per day. And what should it be? For everyone, um, should be somewhere around 2,300 milligrams. <laughs> um, if you have high blood pressure, somewhere around 1,500 milligrams. So we are not doing an awesome We're not job doing in general. Great. It's okay. not doing great. Good to know. Good <laughs> and to I know. think it's, um, it just kind of shows how much you really have to work to get it down. Because if you're not trying, chances are you're probably eating too much salt. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, um, so of course, trying to avoid salt foods that we know are salty. So we know things like soup and bacon and lunch meat tend to be really salty. Um, but salt really sneaks in a lot of ways. Um, one of those things is eating out at restaurants where you have absolutely no control over how much sodium or high sodium ingredients they use sure, in their and, cooking. And, and they're looking to make everything taste really good of because course. you're paying a bunch of you money for come, it. They want you to come back. So, um, so just be very, very careful when you're eating out. Um, make sure that if you're at sort of a more chain restaurant, you can look at the nutrition information online. Um, or you can sometimes ask the chef to prepare food made simply, maybe a piece of grilled salmon without any added salt, sure. some fresh steamed vegetables, something like that. Yeah, I, I feel like the waiter often asks at whatever restaurant you're at, you know, any special dietary needs, and right. this would be a good time to mention. Yes, to absolutely. Them. And restaurants are really, really used to that these days. Everyone is is avoiding something, so it's, sure. don't don't feel ashamed to ask for that. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing also with sodium is um, make sure that you're reading food labels. I know we talk about this a lot as well, um, but just because something says low sodium or um, lower sodium does not mean that it's low sodium. Gotcha. Yeah. My favorite example is soy sauce. So if we grab this soy sauce, sure. it is light, so that's saying that it's low sodium soy sauce. Yeah. I, I noticed in the grocery store that it, there wasn't one that actually said low sodium. They right. all said light. Right. Right. So if we look at how much sodium is in this, and this is for one tablespoon, we'll see, of, so, of soy sauce, there is five, 630 milligrams. <laughs> so that's like almost half. So one tablespoon of this is, you're pretty much done for um, half the day. Yeah, and this is the light stuff. Okay, all yeah. right. So, Good to know. So just, it just kind of shows how important it is to really read those food labels and not take the, the front you have to know what the numbers are. Sure, makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes, yeah. Um, one great way to add flavor to your food, of course, is to use herbs and spices instead of salt. Um, so using fresh garlic, sure. yeah. garlic powder, awesome. um, cumin, dill, all of those spices are a great way to add flavor to your food without adding any, any salt. Okay. Um, fresh lemon and lime juice and vinegar is another great way as well. Okay, and I know we uh, talked a bit in an earlier episode about um, salt substitutes. Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. Uh, salt substitutes a better idea for people trying to keep their sodium yeah, down? It depends. So uh, many salt substitutes are made with potassium chloride. 
so that's potassium. Got it. So, so if it's a truly salt substitute, stay away from um, potassium chloride if you do need to limit your potassium, which most patients with stage four or five kidney disease do need to do. Sure. Um, if you have stage one or two um, or don't need to limit potassium, then it would be an okay option. Okay. Yeah. Along those same lines, um, there's a lot of spice blends out there. So um, there's things like lemon pepper and Cajun seasoning and mesquite barbecue seasoning and all sure. sorts of different ones. And those can be great, but a lot of times they have quite a bit of salt in them. Ah, uh, the hidden sodium again. Exactly. Okay. So yet again, look at that food label and make sure that there's no salt if you do choose a, uh, spe a spice blend. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yes. All right, um, so moving on to phosphorus. Um, so phosphorus is something that all people with stages four and five kidney disease should be limiting um, to no more than 800 to 1,000 milligrams per day of phosphorus. Okay, yes. and, and how, how much do, does an average diet have? Do you know that number? It, uh, the average diet, I believe, is somewhere around 1,500, if I, 1,200 to 1,500. So, okay. so not as as dramatic as the sodium, but definitely above what we should be consuming. Sure. Yes. Um, and with phosphorus, there's phosphorus in lots of different foods, um, but sort of the the worst phosphorus, if you will, is phosphorus from food additives. Okay. Yes. And how are we going to identify what yeah. kind of phosphorus is yeah. in the food? It's tough. It's tough. So there is phosphorus in a lot of things like um, chocolate and whole grains, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but any phosphorus that is added to food in processing is going to be that sort of artificial phosphorus. And that is so bad because our bodies love that phosphorus and it sucks it right up. So we absorb 100% of that sort of artificial phosphorus compared to more natural phosphorus, we absorb somewhere between 50 to 70 percent of that. Okay. There also so just tends to be a lot more of it. You're automatically getting yeah. more yeah. just by the way you process exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if we look at this TV dinner here, um, so one thing that we'll, we'll look at this uh, macaroni and cheese and chicken dinner, if we look at the nutrition facts label and we just kind of peek down here, there's no phosphorus on that label, which is the case for most nutrition facts labels, unfortunately. Great. You, so you won't see phosphorus. So that means this doesn't have phosphorus? But unfortunately, or? no. Oh, okay. <laughs> really, the best way to really see if a food has phosphorus is to look at the ingredients. Let's see if we can. And this is just really focus small. In on those. Well, you'll just have to believe us, yeah. but it's really small. But if we look at this ingredient label, I have underlined here five different ingredients that have the word phosphate in them. Okay, I'm seeing sodium phosphate, disodium phosphate, monocalcium phosphate, sodium acid pyrophosphate, <laughs> yep. and another monocalcium. It has more than one thing with monocalcium yes. phosphate yes. in it. So this, I, have, I even have no idea how much phosphate this actually has, but probably a lot. <laughs> so if, if it manages to list at least five ingredients exactly. that have phosphates. Exactly, okay. exactly. And so um, you'll see that there's a lot of really fancy words in this, in, this ingredient list and, you know, sort of sort of a mouthful, sort of sciencey chemistry words. Um, but the key is to look for the letters P H O S. Okay. You'll yep. see every one of those ingredients that I underlined has PHOS in it, and that means that that additive has phosphate in it. So, okay. so avoid any um, any food product that has those ingredients that have PHOS or phos in, in the word. So I, I noticed that um, this meal, which is one of those uh, meals you just get off the dry mm -hmm. uh, shelf at the grocery store, uh, I don't believe this one had any FOSS ingredients in it. So is this the way to go instead of that frozen TV dinner? In terms of phosphate, it may, may be a better option. Um, with any sort of prepackaged food that you're not cooking at home yourself, I'm always concerned about sodium. So let's check sodium. to see how much sodium okay. is in there. Yeah, look into that one. So uh, the serving size is one tray, so mm -hmm. it's the whole tray. Yes. 240 calories in sodium. We have 1,130 milligrams or what's listed here is 49% of your sodium yeah. for the day. Yes. So phosphate this, this free, but <laughs> not very much food. So that's not gonna fill you up very much. You're gonna need to eat much more food than that for a whole day. So 
It's going to put you over your sodium goal very easily. Okay, so maybe those dry shelf pre-made meals also not the yes. way to go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, eating out at restaurants and any sort of convenience pre-packaged food is going to be really high in salt, and it's just really, really difficult. Not impossible, but very difficult to find low sodium and low phosphorus options. Okay. Um, so you just have to be really, really careful. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, in addition to that sort of artificial phosphorus that you find in food additives, there is naturally, naturally occurring phosphorus in a lot of different foods. Um, and one of those things is whole grains. Okay. Yeah, so, so like, like whole grain bread, whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, brown rice, all of those things are healthy for most people, but patients with kidney disease, um, especially stages four and five, choosing the white bread products are actually better. It has less less phosphorus and actually less potassium as well. Okay, so like this white rice right. is the white way to go. White rice is going to be a better option than brown rice. Okay. Same thing with the white pasta and white bread. Yes. All right. Um, another thing, uh, food that sort of has a lot of phosphorus in it is um, chocolate, actually. Ah, okay. Yes. So we have a, a lovely chocolate bar yes, here. Yes, yes. So if you do choose to enjoy chocolate occasionally, as we all certainly can from time to time, um, choosing white chocolate or milk chocolate is better than choosing a dark chocolate um, if you have kidney disease because it, milk chocolate doesn't really have that much actual chocolate in it. Sure. So it doesn't have much phosphorus along with yeah, it either. I'm looking at the ingredients list and it does not list, I don't see anything that starts with PHOS. Oh, good, great. Excellent. So, <laughs> so um, just so, real stuff like milk, cocoa butter. Sugar. It does literally have the word fat in it though, milk fat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Which is a good point. So even though um, this doesn't have phosphorus, of course, doesn't mean that you can have that whole package of chocolate. Having, sure. having a, a couple squares once in a while is okay. And especially if you're one of our kidney uh, patients who started out with diabetes, diabetes. Definitely something to keep in mind. Right. There is, of course, a bunch of sugar yes, in chocolate. Yes, you would definitely want to count that as one of your carbohydrate servings if you have diabetes. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, some other foods that um, naturally have phosphorus is um, our nuts. Nuts, nuts okay. and seeds. Um, so a lot of people think nuts are very good for you. For many people, they are. There's lots of fiber and healthy fat, but there's also a lot of phosphorus. Okay. So if you do choose to eat nuts, trying to eat no more than this is um, about a quarter cup of almonds or one ounce of almonds. You can see it's pretty much just a kind of a small handful for me. So that is what one portion of nuts looks like. Okay. And again, as we've talked about in the past, it's probably hard to keep it to, you got to really pay attention right. to keep it to that serving size. Right. Yes. I recommend kind of taking what you're going to eat from the bag, away from the kitchen, sit down, don't bring the bag with you because then you're probably going to eat the whole thing. That's good advice for yes. anything you're trying to portion. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, all right, so the next uh, uh, micronutrient that people with kidney disease should pay attention to is potassium. Okay. Yes. So potassium is interesting um, because not necessarily everyone needs to limit potassium, even if you have kidney disease stages four or five. Interesting. Yes. So it's, that's going to be your dietitian will know? Your dietitian or, or your doctor will know. Okay. Yes. Um, most people do, um, but it is really important to talk to your dietitian or talk to your doctor and make sure that's something that you need to be limiting because if you don't want need to limit it, then we don't want to add unnecessary diet restrictions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've, I definitely, if you're on any kind of restricted diet, you want to try to make it as open as possible. Right. Absolutely. Um, and really what the dietitian or the doctor is going to look at to determine if you do need to limit potassium is how much potassium is in your blood. So when they get, you know, take um, lab draws, that's always something that they're checking. And so if the potassium is creeping up in your blood, then they'll probably recommend that you start limiting how much potassium you're eating to help that number come down a little bit. Of course, because that's one of the things that your kidneys help filter, and so exactly. without working kidneys, it's going it, to build up. Yes, okay. exactly, exactly. Um, so I feel like there's... Um, there, there's potassium in, in pretty much everything we eat. There's okay. potassium in, in meat, there's potassium in grains. Um, so it's really impossible to completely avoid it. Um, but I think then it kind of shows that it's really important to avoid those really high f 
potassium foods. Okay. And those tend to be a specific group of fruits and vegetables. And can you talk with us a little bit more about which fruits and vegetables those would <laughs> yes, be? Yes, of course. Um, so I feel like some of the most common ones are things like bananas. We know bananas of have course, a lot of potassium. Yes. Um, potatoes and any form of potato, so french fries, mashed potatoes. Hard to stay away from the French. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, and oranges tend to be one of those really, really oh, high ones. Okay. Yes. And remember, um, orange juice goes along with that. Of course, yeah. yes. Because it's basically the same thing. So the Makes potassium sense. is going to go right along there. Um, some of the, the better lower potassium options um, are going to be things like green beans. That's a great option, and choosing fresh or frozen green beans is always a better choice because it's okay. going to have less sodium in it. That's um, right, the canned green beans are the ones with all the sodium. Yes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Um, uh, celery is a really great choice. Grapes. Um, we can post a list, and I'm sure you have a list already on your website, of some lower potassium fruits and vegetables. We do, so I'll just take that opportunity oh, yeah. to make sure that everyone knows to visit our website. We're, um, we're at nkfi.org, that's nkfi like National Kidney Foundation Illinois.org. Um, what I'm showing here is our diet and nutrition section. So we do have, I'll just uh, add as a reminder, our everyday eating cookbook. It is um, for people who are on the dialysis diet, which as a reminder is not the diet we're talking about right now today. Um, but for those of you who um, end up on dialysis or are already on dialysis, that free cookbook is available um, by contacting our office. Um, and we have lots of great information on this page, um, both from our website, and we can um, send you out to some other useful websites as well so that you can get additional information uh, like the info that you've been getting from this show. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so a lot of patients, after we kind of go through all of these micronutrients, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, it's sort of overwhelming, so what do I actually eat? You know, that's often a question that I'll get. Um, and really, putting together a healthy kidney meal is similar to putting together a healthy meal for anyone else, just being careful that you're choosing the right foods as you're putting that meal together. So this meal here... So generally, any meal, you're going to want some protein, some starch and some vegetable. So with protein, this is a chicken breast here, you just want to keep, um, keep your portions to somewhere around three to four ounces, about okay. the size of a deck of cards. Um, in general, you also want to choose leaner meats, so choosing chicken or um, boneless, skinless meats, not the high fat ground beef or um, fish is another good choice. Um, so just trying to choose a lean meat and keeping your portions to three or four ounces, about the size of the deck of cards or the palm of your hand. Okay. Palm of your hand seems to be a good yes, trick. Yes, yes, yes. Um, then with the vegetable, um, choosing a low potassium vegetable. So here we have asparagus. That would be a great option. The green beans, onions, bell peppers, um, so something along those lines. And really, you can go crazy. You can you can even add these green beans if you want. <laughs> as long as it's a non-starchy vegetable. Um, it, you know, filling up on those is, is really, really good for your kidneys. They're going to be low in all of the things that we're trying to limit. Sure. Yes. And then you also want to have some, uh, have a starch. Um, so we're going to pretend that this is mashed cauliflower. Okay. Um, which is really more of a non-starchy vegetable. But for a, a kidney diet, you could add white rice. That would be a great option. Maybe a piece of white bread if it made sense with the meal. Um, you could do some couscous. That might work. Sure. And just keeping it to around half a cup of whatever starch you choose choose for that meal. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. I mean, I would eat this meal. Looks pretty good, right? Yeah. It, I mean, filling. other than that, it appears to be rubber. <laughs> <laughs> it does look pretty good. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. Um, okay. Wonderful. Um, so what else? We are, we're covering the sodium, the phosphorus, the potassium, general healthy meal. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else people need to know about what they may be able to put on their plate? What about other meats are there I think everybody falls back on chicken yeah. as a meat um, Which but can get kind of boring. it can get kind of boring yes. exactly yeah. and you don't want to sort of fall off your diet just because of boredom so mm -hmm, what, what else can people do yeah. I think as long as you're choosing a lean meat um, that can that can fit in this diet as long as you're keeping your portion that's really probably more important than what kind of meat you're choosing um, to that three or four ounces so um, pork often gets a bad rap a lot of pork products are not um, the healthiest because they tend to be cured 
flavored like ham or bacon. Sure. Um, but a pork loin or a boneless, skinless pork chop is really just as healthy as chicken. It has um, generally it's very low low calorie and low fat. So um, they're also very affordable. So sure. I'm, I'm getting those boneless, skinless pork chops. They're usually about this big. They're pre-portioned to be perfect. That's a great option. Um, you can choose the uh, the lean ground beef. So generally it's called ground sirloin. Okay. You could look at that. Um, and if you look at the number um, on that package, normal ground beef is normally 80-20, which says that it's 80% meat and 20% fat. Okay. Which is a lot of fat. That is a lot of fat. Yes. Is there a way to get the fat out? You could, yes, absolutely. You could, when you cook it, just drain the fat after you brown the ground beef. Okay. That's one way to do it. Okay. Um, or buy ground sirloin, which generally is 93.7. So 93% meat, oh. 7% fat. So much lower. Um, and then you're not going to have to drain off as much fat. Which really, sure. it's, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do see we have some grapes over here as well. Can I ask about... Um, good fruits. So we talked about bad fruits, mm -hmm. like, or not bad, but Higher less potassium. awesome fruits, yes. yeah. like bananas mm -hmm. or oranges. So grapes are yes. a good option? Yep, grapes are a great option. They're low in potassium. Um, I would caution you with grapes is it's really easy to eat a lot of grapes. They are small they are and small, crunchy. Easy and to pop in your mouth. Yep. Um, so this is what a serving of grapes looks like technically. Okay. You can see it's again about a handful in my hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, that doesn't really look like a ton, a ton of no, grapes no. to me. Yeah, so again, taking them out of the bag, bringing them to the couch or wherever you're eating, and um, just taking what you what you should eat. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, other good fruits are berries. Um, berries are great. Any kind of berry, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Those are those are all good. And apples are another good choice. Ah, uh, apples. Okay. Yes. Good. Kind yeah. of a different fruit for each season. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Great. Um, anything else you want people to know today? Um, one one thing that we did talk about earlier is that generally patients with stage three or stage four and five kidney disease do not have to limit their fluid. Um, that's one big difference is when um, patients do start dialysis, you often need to restrict fluid, but generally um, stages four and five do not need to restrict fluid. So you can drink drink water freely. Sure. To keep the general kidney health with yes. drinking water. Absolutely. Are there other differences that uh, people who are on dialysis, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's a completely different diet, but what are the major differences between four and five, kind of that maintenance mm -hmm. diet, and then once you're on dialysis? Yeah, I think in addition to the fluid, um, probably the biggest difference is the protein restriction. So patients with stages four and five kidney disease really should be limiting protein to, to 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram by Body weight. Um, I would ask your your dietitian or doctor about how to figure out how much that I was actually say, is that, and what that looks like. That sounds like hard math. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was sciencey language. But um, so it's generally just trying to restrict protein. With dialysis, you actually need more protein. Um, okay. Than even your average healthy American. So um, so really, that's probably the biggest difference is restricting protein to to needing more protein in your diet. And then by the opposite with fluids, where you don't need to restrict yes. fluids mm -hmm. and then suddenly you do. Yes, okay. exactly. And that's why it's so important to really work with your dietitian to see what you need to work on. And, and all of this is very specialized as well based on your labs and, and your situation. Sure. So mm -hmm. as always, do check with your own dietitian or physician um, if you're on any kind of special diet. Uh, we want to be sure that if you're dealing with other things like high blood pressure, diabetes, in addition to your um, kidney diet that you're also following the necessary diet exactly. there, uh, which can, can be a little complex, it of course. It can be complex, so, and that's, we're here to help. So We are. So if you have any questions, please do reach out to us. All, all of our information is available on the website. And just as a reminder, that's nkfi.org, National Kidney Foundation, Illinois.org, nkfi.org. And we do have information in addition to our diet information. We have all kinds of information for patients and families, as well as lots of free programs for you to attend. So please do check out our website when you get the chance. Um, thank you again so much for joining us this month. Thank you for joining us, Melanie. Thank you, Megan. And um, we'll be back next month with another episode of Kidneys in the Kitchen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.